Hey guys, how's it going? Talon here back with another video and today uh, I'm going to be discussing a little bit of my practices when I practice uh, traditional instinctive archery. Um, in my case, I'm practicing for a hunting scenario, but this can be applied to any scenario and uh, how far you want to take your, your archery practice with. Uh, how I practice is I'll start at five yards. So my target is over there in the background. I've got my pie plate or dinner plate. Um, anything that I will be hunting is roughly the size of a dinner plate. That's a partridge, a rabbit, uh, even a deer. Now why I say a deer is because the vital area that I want to hit is the size of that. Nothing more, nothing less. Um, the white-tailed deer is a large animal, but its vitals are quite small and compared to that. So I want to make sure that I'm absolutely certain that I can put my arrow right there and uh, perform an ethical shot that, uh, that I'm happy with. Uh, it's, it's super important to know your limits and know where you can shoot. Wow, sorry about that. A uh, bunch of clouds just rolled in and the wind picked up. So it's, it's super important to be confident in yourself and uh, know that you can make a good shot. What I do is I will set up my target and I will walk five yards away from that target. And as I walk, I put three arrows in the pie plate. I move around each time. I never shoot from the same spot twice because uh, that's, that's counterintuitive to what you want to do. You're never going to be doing the same thing. You always want to change it up. You want to make sure that you're able to adapt to different scenarios. So I move around the target in a, in a semicircle. So I have it there, semicircle, move one, two, three. And if I put three arrows in, I increase that by another five yards. If I miss two arrows on the next interval, then I go back to my first one and put three more in. So I'll show you guys how that goes. One, two, three, four, five. And now I go in a semicircle here. So I hit all three arrows, I'm now going to move up to 10 yards. So there's my five yard grouping. Nothing too uh, impressive for five yards, but I'm confident at five yards. Now I move up to 10 yards and now we're going to see how that grouping may change. Okay, so here it is, 10 yards. Uh, now, as you can see, my groupings are getting a little more sparse at 10 yards, so I could use more practice at 10 yards. Uh, how I feel confident with, a, with this bow is probably 20 yards maximum at the moment in a hunting scenario, and it has to be a perfect shot. Most of what I'm looking for is, five, is uh, 10 to 15 yards. As you guys can hear, probably, it's a very windy day, and uh, I'm out in the open, so that's suboptimal conditions for uh, shooting this kind of bow. So I know that 15 yards, the wind is going to affect my arrow a little bit. That was my 15 yard shots and let's go and check that out. See if I have to move back to 10. So as you can see guys, three arrows there, sparse yet again. So at this point, I would say, uh, I don't want to move up to 20 yards because Maybe it's how I'm shooting today. Maybe I've changed something in my technique. Uh, maybe I'm overthinking it. So uh, now just for experimental purposes, I'm gonna move up to 20 yards and see if this is true. So here we are now at 20 yards of what I consider to be my maximum range if I'm feeling like the shot is good. Um, just looking at this target from where I am now, that's quite far for me. Um, I'd have to really, really feel like the shot was good for me to take it. So there we are. Uh, now, for my archery practice regime, this would be an absolute fail for me. And I would go back, in this case, I'm gonna go back to 10 yards, see how it feels, and then up to 15 again and float around until I'm absolutely getting good groups. So there it is, guys. A little bit of an insight on my practicing 
for how I like to get consistent. I don't like to, I, I don't get to practice as much as I'd like to because I have to commute quite a ways to uh, shoot my bow. So uh, that's just what I do. I just move, I float between different things. I float between different distances, shoot from different angles all the time. And uh, yeah. Now, another reason why moving back and forth between distances is good be, is as you go back to your closer distances, you find your groups are gonna be getting tighter over the course of, of days or weeks at uh, those closer distances. And a lot of those times, it's those closer shots that you underestimate and you'll miss. Because closer range shots are not to be underestimated. Uh, a lot of people will, will just go at it thinking that they can't miss a close range shot, but it's so easy to miss a close range shot especially with uh, traditional archery because just the slightest slightest movement of your arm or your bow hand and you'll you'll miss the target completely now we're going to go back to 10 yards after my what i think was my 20 yard failure um, in a hunting scenario and and see how my groups have changed if they've changed at all There's my 10 yard grouping again. Um, it's gotten a little bit tighter. Uh, I'm not gonna bother going through all of it, but uh, that's just some tips on how I practice traditional instinctive archery. Thanks a lot for checking out the video, guys. I hope some of the tips that uh, I shared with you today help you out a little bit. If you have some other ways that you like to practice, I'd really like to hear them below. I'm always looking for different ways to improve. Leave a comment down below, let me know what you think. I'm really looking forward to hearing back from you guys. I always like to end my practice off with uh, something fun. Some a little bit of an outrageous shot here. I don't know how it's gonna go. If I miss it, I'm probably gonna lose my arrow. See you guys in another video.